It's at junction point A. Okay. Now, uh, we won't go through uh, all the details of uh, connecting the circuit, taking measurements, which you now should be already know how to do. Um, you answer the two post lab questions that um, are part of uh, section A, or, or the first part of this experiment, and then we get ready to do part B. Okay. That was good. Okay, now we are going to be doing part B. Part B is called the voltage divider and bridge circuit. And this experiment um, is uh, very similar uh, to what you've done before in terms of how to connect things and how to take measurements using a multimeter. But this time we are going to be introduced to two new components that you haven't used before. One of these components is called a thermistor. This little, uh, 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 this little bump here that you can see um, inside this um, rubber uh, tubing, clear rubber tubing, is a tiny resistor. But the difference between um, um, this resistor, a uh, thermistor, and a regular resistor is that a thermistor changes its values with temperature. So as you increase or decrease the temperature, the value of the resistance will change drastically. Okay. And the other component that we're going to use in this experiment is called a variable resistor. Okay. Uh, a variable resistor is a resistor that allows you to um, um, tap any resistance from zero to the maximum available. So this is a, a special precision resistor which has a resistance wire that's wrapped around many, many times. And because um, the resistance wire has a fixed resistance per unit length, if we connect um, an ohmmeter across these two points, we are going to measure the total resistance of this, um, of this wire. Okay. So the, the resistance is going to be always fixed if we connect the ohmmeter here and here. But you'll notice that a variable resistor doesn't have just two terminals it has a third terminal. And the reason it has a third terminal is because it will allow us to tap any resistance from zero to the maximum of resistance available. And how is it done? When we connect our ohmmeter at these two points, current will pass through this resistant, uh, resistance wire, and then wherever we have this sliding contact point, it'll be tapped out at that point, and the current continues on to the other terminal. If we want to reduce the amount of resistance, we move the sliding contact point closer to this terminal. So now um, the ohmmeter only sees so much resistance. If we move this further out, the ohmmeter now will actually see more resistance. So by having a third terminal, we can actually uh, use a, a, a regular resistor as a variable resistor, allowing us um, to use the amount of resistance that we need for the experiment. Okay, so um, what we're going to do uh, quickly is uh, set up this circuit right now. It involves three uh, components, a voltmeter by the symbol, a variable resistor, why? Because it has three terminals, and a battery. How do we set it up? Again, whenever you go from a simple, boxy-looking electrical schematic diagram to your mess of spaghetti that you're going to end up with, um, it is always a good idea to lay out the components um, in the same relative position that you see on the electrical schematic diagram before you make the connections. That way, when your connections are made, then you can be uh, uh, confident that um, the connections that you have here are actually the same connections in the electrical schematic diagram. So, let's begin with um, the variable resistor in the center. The battery we'll be using is a little bit larger one. The positive end will be uh, at the top here. And the, the voltmeter, we'll connect it to the left here. Now, we'll take a minute and connect all these wires together. So, let's begin, let's begin with um, the positive end of the battery. 
we connect the positive end of the battery to the top part of our variable resistor, like this. We connect the bottom part of our battery, negative end, to the bottom part of our resistor here. Okay. Now, let's connect our multimeter to measure voltage. So one wire goes into the common, the other wire goes into volts. We set our multimeter to read voltage. And we, we make our connections. Notice the common end of the, of the voltmeter is connected at this same common point here, at the bottom of the resistor, which continues onto the battery. So we, we put um, one of the wires from the multimeter here. And the other, the other wire goes to the third terminal, not the bottom or the top but this terminal here, like this. We turn on our voltmeter, and um, what do we notice? We notice that um, the voltage right now is a little over 3 volts. Look what happens when I move this uh, sliding contact further down. The voltage has decreased. If I move it all the way, the voltage will be zero, or pretty close to zero. If I move it all the way in the other direction, you will notice that the voltage is uh, pretty close to six. Six is the rated value of this battery here, six volts. Okay, so what, what have we done with this variable resistor? we were able to tap any voltage that we wanted and using this thermometer as a pointer. Right now, if the contact point was in the middle, okay, the voltage that we'll be measuring should be about half of six volts or three volts as you see here. But if, um, well, maybe I should get a pencil, I guess. But um, if this uh, contact point was right over here, what voltage would this voltmeter be measuring? the total voltage, the total voltage of the battery. If this contact point, this third terminal, was connected here, what is the voltage of a single point? Zero. So that's why we can use this setup called a potentiometer or a voltage divider circuit to allow us to tap any voltage that we require from zero to the maximum allowed voltage that uh, we have. So let's say uh, you had an experiment that required um, uh, 2.7 volts. Uh, you cannot go to the source and ask for a 2.7 volt battery because they don't have it. But if you ask them for a variable resistor and a battery that has a voltage value greater than 2.7 volts, you connect them together and by adjusting the variable resistor, you can actually have an output voltage, okay, that will uh, be equal to the voltage that you need, or 2.7 volts. So this is a, a variable resistor, a tabletop model that's used down in the physics labs. But if you go to the source, you can get a small, smaller one, about the size of a, a penny, and it has an adjustable screw on it. All you need to do to tap uh, the voltage that you want, in this case, uh, let's say you want 2.7 volts, um, you attach it to your 6 volt battery, you make adjustments to this variable resistor until you get um, an output voltage that is equal to the voltage that you want, or about, um, about um, 2.7 volts. Okay. And to wrap things up, what we're going to do is um, build this bridge thermistor circuit, which will incorporate this thermistor, which is a resistor that changes its value with temperature, its resistance with temperature. And what we're going to do is we're going to calibrate this uh, bridge thermistor circuit. If 
this thermistor was a regular resistor, and we put it in here, the voltage reading between the two branches of this uh, bridge circuit would be zero. But because this thermistor changes its value, its resistance value with temperature, we'll have different values for voltage, for different resistance values. And how are we going to determine, um, uh, you know, um, how are we going to change the resistance um, of this um, uh, uh, thermistor? We are going to fill um, a container, a beaker like this, with um, cold water, dip it in ice water, okay, and make a note what the voltage reading is. Then we dip it in um, a beaker full of boiling water and determine what the, the voltage reading is the new voltage reading. We hold it in our fingertips and um, we know what our body temperature should be. So um, we have now a new temperature for, uh, which, which will correspond to a new voltage reading. And when the thermistor was in room temperature, we have um, a fourth uh, voltage reading. So we plot these um, um, total of um, four voltage readings for the four known temperatures, ice water, boiling water, body temperature, and room temperature. We produce a calibration curve. And once we actually produce this calibration curve on a graph, what do we now have? We have a calibration curve for this bridge thermistor circuit, which will allow us to use it as a digital thermometer. And what you're going to do in this experiment is um, go over to the hot plate, get um, um, this is a pot of coffee, of Greek coffee, put it in an authentic Greek cup, uh, uh, coffee cup, bring it over to your experiment, and with your thermistor, which will now be acting as your temperature probe, it will be still connected to your circuit, you dip it in here, and whatever voltage value you get uh, from your uh, voltmeter, you record the results, and in your voltage versus temperature graph, you, you say, okay, this voltage value, where it intercepts the graph, would correspond to this temperature. So now, you will have um, a thermistor um, connected to your bridge shot circuit uh, that will allow you to use it as a digital thermometer. And that's it for now, I guess.